everyone, and welcome back to Tales of Berseria. I am Wishblade, and we're gonna have a look at some of the things that I didn't show off a little while ago. Like the active skills and the treasure and the thing we got. Skill list! Ron gets to basic training. Strengthen the crew with the thing and blah 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 blah. Great, let's do this. Experience earned is gone up. I don't know about how much, but it just went up, so it's all good. Treasure? This is our treasure room. That was a voice crack. So far, it's very empty, but... A pendant? Nothing of any worth to me. Oh, but it looks so pretty! A pendant found in the center of a raging windstorm on the layman's sea, yes. Said to occasionally emit a sound like a howling of a... Like a, blah, 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 of a howling of the beast. Of a beast. Something. And here's a little conversation between some of the characters. Usually it's just two. I think it's just two people who talk about it. So... Really sure the pendant looks like a little sinister, but a buell is something, 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 a shade of red. I actually think it would suit you nice to develop it. Me too. I'm not sure if I should take that as an assault in well, uh, in assault. Uh, insult. Maybe I should read this slower if I'm going to read it. I didn't mean it in a bad way. It's like putting lipstick on a rabbit, you know? You're just digging yourself deeper. Haven't you heard that phrase? It means you can take someone cute and dress them up nicely and it'll be even cuter. You have that wrong on so many levels. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let me try to put it in another way. Give pearls to Rapix, caviar to the general, and pendants to demons. Something like that. Ugh, more like preaching to deaf ears. Elf ears? No. So that's just a little flair that you can have. Now, also regarding flair, I did the serving game. And I could, couldn't do it with eyes, and I'm not sure if he actually has the costume, or it just opens up later, I don't know. But, Velvet looks like this now. Ain't she just pretty? She's so pretty. And since our good friend Ison didn't get anything, he just got up an eye patch because that seems fitting. And apparently at some point I got a spyglass. Probably from the expedition. So um, now he has that for a little bit. Rokuro looks like this. Still holding on to his goddamn sword. The bow tie, not really that proper looking, but whatever. And Laffy said, such a cute little guy. Well, there you go. That is all. Now let's go outside. Destroying red crates in a warehouse? Doesn't sound very nice. Have we ever been nice? <laughs> I suppose not. This is a contract job, so let's keep costs down. I'll call the Von Eltia and have her draw the guards away. If you would. What will we be destroying? Who knows? That's hardly our concern. I suppose so. And now, there shall be some events here and there. I'm not sure if there's any events up there. I'm gonna go have a look. Let's go up there and have a look, because I'm not certain if there is anything. I know there's that one over there, but... Oh well. Well, we can have a look around. Okay, clearly not. What you can do, if you wanna... You can open the map and have a look around like this, if you feel like it. So, we got two in the cathedral and those two out here so all right we shall go over here past the fountain and view an event and yeah some of these events they can drag on for a while including then if there are skits as well that's a lot of talking in this game that is okay on some levels but but on others it can just draw things out a whole lot so maybe this episode is going to be a whole lot of talking maybe let's start over here with a musician man that ceremony was simply fantastic. Lord Artorius's speech was brilliant, of course, but Prince Percival was really something, too. He raises up Artorius to help the country and its people, then willingly steps down. Now that's what I call a king. You think so? Well, to me, he just looks like a wimp. He may look that way, but he has a great inner strength. He's excelled as a scholar and a leader since he was young. His only hobby is falconry, but sadly, I hear he hasn't had the time for it lately. You seem like a big supporter of his. Well, he's got two younger brothers, but just between you and me, they're dolts. Worse, they hang with a bad crowd. If anything were to happen to Prince Percival, the future of Midgand would be bleak. I see. So everyone's hopes are riding on him, then. Which means Midgand's vulnerable without him. Well, that just sounds entirely sad. Bye, musician man. You have quite the fan base over there. Have fun with that, I guess. I'll go over here to the cathedral place. Do some more events and stuff. Yee-hoo! Events? Where are you? Up there, apparently. 
Greetings, father man. You look like a priestly dude. What do you have to say for yourself? High Priest Gideon is an honest and righteous man. He's dedicated his life to his faith and to the church. Now, as the representative of the clergy, he's thrown his full support behind the abbey. Hmm. So, he's a man of principle. That's right. He even donated his personal savings to support orphanages and hospitals. So be at ease. For he offers up prayers for all equally, even for the more dubious among us, such as yourselves. Right. I'm so grateful. I can feel the tears of gratitude coming. Any moment now. Yeah, it's so amazing, and actually now that I'm looking at Velvet, just because he's... Her clothes are so very fancy. Um, yeah, that's not right at all. <laughs> no. There you go. Now she's proper and fancy. Look at her, she's so pretty. She's so pretty and beautiful. Sheena would be potentially jealous, I'm I'm sure. Anyway. Outrageous! Why doesn't the Abbey crack down on the taverns? They are dens of evil that dispense only luxury, temptation, and escape. They must be stopped. I'd rather they didn't. That place over there has the best drinks in town. <laughs> See, that's exactly what I mean. They tempt us into wickedness, ruining man and woman alike. The more you drink, the happier and more joyful you get. All the important things in life stop mattering. Their Mabo curry is delicious. <laughs> no, no, no. See, even children are being tempted by their evils. Eating both Mabo and curry together, it's heresy. There is a limit to the amount of luxury one can endure. What the world needs now is abstinence, austerity, restraint. If you want to deny yourself, go ahead and do it. But don't force your beliefs onto others. People eat to live. Some even live to eat. It's part of being human. Velvet. That's pretty convincing coming from you. Leave me alone. D hey, I want to eat and drink to my heart's content too. But doing so makes us no better than animals. In order for humanity to survive these harsh times, we need to overcome our instincts and act like rational beings. Yeah, how about we don't do that and you just go off, do whatever, and thank you, Velvet, for being so reasonable with the whole don't thrust your beliefs onto others. Very good, I like it. Praise be Shepherd Artorius. Thanks to him, people have started worshipping the Empyreans again. Now our salvation is at hand. The Empyreans? They are the gods that created the world? Yeah. The four Empyreans each rule one of the four elements. Earth, water, fire, and wind. I read in a book that Empyrean worship is the oldest form of human religion. The Midgan Church also worshiped the Empyreans. But because we've had peace and prosperity for so long, True belief in them has slowly faded. So now that people are frightened of the demon blight, they're clinging to their once forgotten gods. Wait a minute. Maybe Artorius is using religion to manipulate the people into following him. Oh, great Empyreans! Please grant Shepherd Artorius the strength to save your humble servants. If that's the case, he's done a damn fine job of it. Silly people, all of you. Now, before we go anywhere else, considering we have to kind of pass it along the way, I will go to the shop, I will see if there's anything important to do at the shop, and then I will see you after I've done all of that. And we are done. Also, something I totally, totally forgot about while I was doing the, um, the dangerous encounter, um, like, between episodes, uh, 15 and 16, I also got this thing, the Beast Fang, capability versus beast. I like it, and it looks so deadly. And people are looking like so, after some enhancement and stuff and stuff. So here you go, it didn't have to do that much around here. But now, we shall move onwards, and this is another time where we can't use the Denor bottle to get the hell out of town. So something must be happening as soon as we go over here, maybe, or at some point. We'll find out eventually. There isn't anything, like, events or whatever to deal with, so we just gotta make our way to Point Sexton, eventually, as we run all the way to the North Gate. Oh dear, it's so long to get there. There we go. Hello. Greetings, Magilu's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? 
You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments, especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes, people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes, they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Wherever there's a Code Red demon, you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <laughs> and let me guess, that's where the Blood Wings come in. Exactly. There are Blood Wings all throughout Midgant who have information on these Code Red demons. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. But I won't make any promises. That's fine. No sense in drawing up a contract when the hunter probably won't survive anyway. If you get results, let us know. We'll hold up our end. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Here, take this. Those blood wings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those Code Red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these Code Red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We'd be wise not to underestimate them. We should talk to those Blood Wings before considering any of the marks. They might have information that will help us prepare. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right. And we get the Enough Bottle! Or, well, yeah, we probably just get one or something. The Enough Bottle, another kind of bottle, like the Nenoi Bottle. We can use this, when we are all around the places and stuff, to go to certain towns. Yes, indeed. This can teleport us to all the wonderful town locations that we have visited in our adventures. Also, you don't have any information about the Code Red things. But yeah, Code Red, it's bounty hunting. We'll get to some of those eventually over time. Hey, Laffy said. What is it, Rokuro? Mavo Curry. Huh? Oh. <laughs> You're an interesting one. You like Mavo Curry that much, huh? It smells good. And it's creamy and kind of spicy. Eating it made me feel nice. I'd say you love it then. Do all Malakim have such an appetite? Each has their own tastes. Some eat a lot, some eat a little. Just like humans or demons. What do you like, Aizen? Drinks, I suppose. What else? Uh, pretty much just drinks. Don't you like anything else? Is it a problem if I don't? No. I'm just wondering. For me, it's drinks and candied sweet potatoes. That's where you boil strips of sweet potato in oil and then coat them in sugar, right? Yeah, I never get tired of them. So, you like to drink, but you've also got a sweet tooth? Yeah. Is that so strange? No. Candied sweet potatoes? Sounds good. Uh, There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a sign that you're alive, remember? Right. You guys are so adorable! Also, Expedition's back. How wonderful! A new area has been discovered! <laughs> Diomel Islands, or Diomel, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm one item I don't have from the Layman Sea. So here's the question, do I want to try and just keep getting that thing, or do I move on to something else? Really, as long as I have the special items, I really shouldn't care that much, I think. So you can do whatever you want, but you know what? As soon as I have the special items and I get a new area, I think I'll just move on to that because materials, ah, they're not that important. So, DML Islands. These islands are home to a legend of two mysterious twins. Any structures crumbled to dust long ago, and the only surviving relics are clothing made from unknown material. And I believe this is a reference to Tales of Fantasia Narikiri Dungeon. Or Narikili Dungeon, I don't know, however you want to pronounce that. Something. But yeah, 
Onwards. Scout ship setting sail. Awesome. And now, with enough bottle at hand, we can warp to the port section south entrance. Is there another entrance? Yes, there is. And there we go. Now I don't have to walk across the entire field and everything. Quick travel. It's wonderful. And again, I have a bottomless version of this, so if you want more, you might... You're gonna have to buy them or find them in chests and stuff, but whatever, let's go. Now, we have more events to cover. Yes, indeed. One of them is inside the inn. So, hello, sir. Yeah, I've already done shopping. I don't really care that much about you. No. That shouldn't be necessary whatsoever. Nectar is a powerful nutritional supplement, but it's also addictive. So only medical professionals are permitted to make it and prescribe its use. But lately, black market nectar is being moved around in huge quantities. Are you selling? Don't be ridiculous. I am an honest merchant. Then again, demand for it is probably huge. Besides being highly nutritional, it is also highly intoxicating. Look at the age we're living in. I don't blame people for wanting an escape. You think so? I think a good drink is far better. What's peculiar about the whole thing is the Abbey. They could put a stop to it easily if they wanted to. Anyway, no one knows who's making it or how it's getting around, but good citizens shouldn't touch the stuff. Got it? Okay, don't go for the nectar. Alright, it's like drugs. Stay away from drugs, kids. Don't do it. It's bad for you. And now there's another event up there by the cat's box. So let's go and get it. And then... The warehouse is also up there at the north, so... It's all good, we're going in the same direction. Yes, I am lacking something to talk about. Now... Yeah, basically I'm all confuzzled. Let's just... Let's just ramble something. Let's just ramble about something, I don't know. We're rambling about the rambling of something. I don't know why the ship's actually out there. Why are you parked your ships all the way out there? It makes no sense! God damn it, people! Have you heard? The Abbey is building a new base. I hear it's a huge temple in the middle of some mountains near a site of ancient ruins. If they've got time to build a temple, they should use it to kill more demons instead. You sure you want to talk like that here? Ha! I'm different from all those losers who swoon over the shepherd's pretty words and ignore reality. No one's found a way to cure demon blight yet, and demons are still swarming everywhere. Sure, maybe things are not as bad as they could have been, but we still have no idea what's going to happen next. Think about it. Demons could be infiltrating the city as we speak, and we'd be none the wiser. Yep, you're completely right. That is definitely true. There could be demons hiding all over the place. You never know what they might do. Maybe they might sneak into your warehouses. Right. The guards are gone. Let's move in. Benwick and the crew did a fine job. And in those warehouses, they might blow things up. Hello. That's a lot of red crates. Got sparklies here as well. Give them to me. And the chest. With an amber fragment. And now to burn everything to bits. Red crates. These must be our targets. The seal of Midgand Cathedral? Should we look inside? There's no need. Burn them, Luffy said. Okay. We're done here. Let's go. That storm cost too much time. I must report to Lord Artorias as soon as possible. <gasps> it's you! Oh hey, the crybaby. Eleanor Hume, Exorcist Praetor! And boss battle! Hello again, Eleanor! I'll just take care of your little... wee little boogers right here. Apparently she does. She's very, I don't know, determined to to take us down. Also, the will to oppose the reason or the Abbey battle is just the normal battle theme. Hi, <laughs> that just happened. Well, thank you, Rokuro. That was awfully kind. And now, to kick your ass. What do you don't like? You don't like fire? Then I shall give you some fire. There you go, my dear. Have some of the fire. And Discord! <laughs> it's so satisfying to do! Willing to fight without your Malachine? No! You set the storehouse ablaze? The 
people have worked so hard to withstand this time of crisis. How can you destroy what they have so painstakingly built? Because I'm not human. You'll pay for this, you demon! More Malakim up her sleeves. I will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Come and face me now, demon! He's adorable. Uh, am I? Ooh, I found you at last! That bad, bad voice! The Enfu, you traitor! You'll never leave my clutches again! Not her! No! What are you doing? Get out there and fight! Hey, look! Is that smoke? It is! Fire! The fire has spread enough. Let's get going. You're coming with us. Let me go! Witch nippers! Madam Exorcist! What happened? Oh, you're badly hurt. I can wait. Gather the people and put out that fire. Yes, madam. Tell me, do you know what was being kept in that warehouse? Um, mostly nectar, I believe. Vast stores of the medicine, provided by High Priest Gideon, to be distributed to doctors across the land. Medicine given by the Church? Why would anybody destroy it? We just don't like the Church, is all, also. Apparently we've Magilu found who she's looking for, so maybe she's gonna join us if we're gonna keep finding Eleanor or something, maybe, I don't know! Also, new arts. Yay! And, Intermediate Ignisite unlocks level 2 random skills. Now they will be even more powerful! Whew. Looks like we're in the clear. <laughs> Misfortune and anguish! I had that little turncoat right in front of me! Well, at least now I know where to find him! That weird little Moloch was the one you were looking for? The very same, the Moloch Bienfu! A creature of unfathomable wickedness and beguiling cuteness who broke the heart of this wretched maiden! <laughs> Once I finally catch him, who knows what I'll be capable of! Not sure I get it. Me neither. Good. Pray that you never do. Eh, whatever. Let's go back and report our success. She's still freaking awesome with her wig and dramatics and stuff. And now, basically, yeah, we need to go back to Logris. Can we just do it like this? Yes. Warping to Logris, it has occurred. Voila. Now, ask it. What's the deal with you and that exorcist Eleanor? She had tears in her eyes when we first saw her at Northgand. Velvet poked fun at her, calling her the crybaby exorcist. Why would an exorcist cry? Sacrificing the individual for the good of the many is part of Artorius's philosophy. She seemed troubled by that. She's naive. That she can still carry on shows just how strong she is. It looks like they don't hand out the rank of Praetor to just anyone. Hmm? Just stay sharp around her. That's all. By the way, is that Bienfu character that Magilu was after really a Moloch? He may look strange, but yes. He's still a Moloch. That means Magilu is an exorcist. Why does she call herself a witch, then? If she got locked up in that prison, she must have been kicked out of the Abbey. Or she could be a fraud. Yeah. Even if she wasn't an exorcist, she could still perform some tricks with a Moloch like that. I will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Face me now, demon! <laughs> right? <laughs> Was that laughter? Uh, I'm sorry. Why apologize? Bienfu is funny, right? Right. Then if you want to laugh, laugh! <laughs> if you think that's funny, you should give it a try for yourself. Say, Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Knock it off. Huh? What's the problem? People are staring. Don't attract attention. I'm sorry. She's so uptight. Let's try it together later, Luffy said. Uh, all right. 
Damn it, Velvet, stop ruining the fun! They're so sweet together, it's like big brother and little brother, it's so wonderful, and now there's another skit and I'll view it in a moment as I get that dark and- Well, we've learned one thing coming to the capital. The Abbey and Shepherd Artorius have expanded their power immensely. They might as well be the Empire now. They have the undying support of the populace. The Shepherd, savior of humanity. <laughs> I wonder what he meant by the blessings of the Empyrean Enominat. That's what they call the gods they worship in church, right? The Empyreans? He promised a lot in that speech. But can he really command such a power? I have no idea. Not even we Malachim know of them beyond the stories and legends. He called Enominat the fifth Empyrean. There should only be four. One ruling each element. Is he talking about a new Empyrean? Have you heard anything Luffy said? Sorry. I don't know anything about this. It doesn't matter. We should be careful about taking his words at face value. The man is no saint. He'll stop at nothing to achieve his aims. But there's no way he could have a god at his beck and call. Don't underestimate the Abbey. Trust me, I'm not. That's why I'm using the Shadow Guild to help us hunt them down. And to make sure that I kill him. Fun fact, in case you haven't noticed, Laffy said, that's... That one strand of hair on top of his head has a life of its own. Because during skits, sometimes you can actually see it shaped like a question mark when he's like pondering something or thinking about stuff or questioning things. Then it's actually a question mark. It just that's just silly. Nafi says hair is alive! And this is the code red person that we can talk to for things. A reward, yes indeed, for the shrieking demonic bat, or the barren bat, to be precise. And apparently, there's a creeping viper somewhere on Gullis Lake Road, a place we haven't been to, that awards villains Ventite. And blah blah, unlocking the intense battle difficulty in the options menu. We'll have a look at that eventually, but for right now, we're gonna go in there and get ourselves a new assignment in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, see ya later.